I really like these kinds of videos, but I get why people hate them. People hate these what I eat in a day videos because they think it's the influencer telling whomever is watching, oh, you have to eat this and this much and this way at this time. The thing is though, I anticipate you and I probably have different goals, different medical issues and like different tastes. So as I go through my day today, I don't want you to think, oh my God, Mike's a doctor, he's in good shape. I have to do exactly what he does. What I actually want you to take from this video is twofold. The first is when I do something, when I say something that makes sense for me and you see it and you think to yourself, huh, that's not a bad idea. Let me try that. That's what I want you to get out of this video. Ideas. You don't have to do exactly what I do and exactly why I do it. I don't want that to happen. I want you to live your own life. I want you to go on your own journey. I'm here to give some ideas. The second thing I want you to get from this video and maybe some videos like it, it's not really as complicated as all the gurus would have it seem. All that complicated stuff, it's not necessary. Sure, this kind of thing, being in a calorie deficit, trying to lose a little bit of weight, and let's be honest, it's not really weight we're after, it's fat that we're after. I don't wanna lose muscle, I don't wanna lose bone density, so let's just lose the fat part. But it's work and it requires some thought, but it's not nearly as complicated as people give it credit for. All right, enough yammering. I'll probably talk too much later anyway, so uh, let's get started. Each and every one of my days starts off the exact same way. I wake up and I have a frozen waffle right before we take the dogs for a walk. If you've been around for a while, you'll know this, but if you're new here, I'm a type one diabetic. If I get up and go for a walk straight away, my blood sugar plummets to almost dead. It's happened before. So I have that frozen waffle to make that not happen. It's quick, it's convenient, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought at five o'clock in the morning so I can roll out of bed and just go do it. After the dogs get walked, I always have three eggs. I don't know why I chose three, it seems to work for me. I know my cholesterol is remarkably well controlled even with consuming a lot of dietary cholesterol, so I'm not worried about it. This is one of those things that if you have really high cholesterol, maybe crushing a bunch of eggs is not the best idea. But if you don't, like, keeps me happy, keeps me full. All right, it's lunchtime, and the one thing that I usually go for with any meal like this is it needs to be very simple to make, it needs to be very easy to track, and it needs to actually satiate me, and also not be disgusting. I guess it's four things, but they're not terribly unreasonable. Since I started on this whole fitness journey thing, now at my stage, when I really actually want to lose some fat, I track all of my food. But there's only two things that are really super important to me. Number one, total number of calories, and number two, amount of protein. And that's just specifically for fat loss. There's a whole host of other things that are in there for health, but you'll kind of see when I get to that here shortly. I don't have a ton of carbohydrates in the sense of like starchy carbs and breads and stuff like that especially midday because I don't want my blood sugar to go super high. It's probably not going to because I trained yesterday, the day before, and the day before, but I'm not training today, so, uh, you know, it's really a blood sugar thing that I've noticed in me. That being said, I know plenty of people who do really, really well, plenty of diabetics who do really, really well on a ton of carbohydrates, and if that works great for you, then awesome. This is just what I do. So let me stop talking again and like actually start making food. Literally the only two things that are gonna go in this giant walk over here, are a pound of ground turkey, which is 98% lean, I think is what the package said, and this entire bag of frozen vegetables. Why am I doing these two? Lots of volume, not a ton of calories, and lots of protein. I think there's like 80, 90 grams of protein in that whole pound of turkey, and not a lot of much else. And then vegetables, because fiber, vitamins, minerals, volume. See how complicated that was? Like, not. Now sure, if you're not 6'2", 215 pounds, you don't need to eat all of this. Maybe like half if you're smaller. I don't know, but that's what I'm gonna eat for lunch today. No, yeah, I'm gonna season it and do other stuff to it because I'm not like terrible to myself. Some of you may be thinking it's weird that I have these in these plastic bags, uh, but if you've been to the grocery store and you see how they package like a pound of turkey breast, um, it's like, Bordering on the criminally insane how much space these things take up So I usually just unbox them put them in their bags and then put them in the fridge So I have room in my fridge for something else probably a step too far, but like I don't know. While this stuff cooks, there's something that I wanted to touch on that I do that a lot of people I think probably aren't there yet. And that's calorie and macro counting. A lot of people when they first start out, they don't have a great relationship with food in general, right? It could be emotional eating, it could be, uh, who knows, right? But I've seen plenty of people who think that they can never do something or they can never eat something. Now, if you're allergic to it, yeah, like don't eat it. If you don't like it, don't eat it. Other than that, like you can eat whatever the hell you want. Like if I wanted to go grab a candy bar, I would go grab a candy bar. I don't feel like it's something that is evil to me. 
I don't really feel like I want a candy bar right now. But if I do, I feel very comfortable just going to get one and knowing that it's not gonna woefully derail all of the progress that I've made over the last 10 years. So if your relationship with food isn't that great to begin with, that's something you should probably focus on before you even think about tracking calories and macros and all that good stuff. All right, you're probably gonna want some sort of like, how do I cook this? Very simply, I have the turkey in the wok cooking. There is uh, very, very little pink remaining, so it's almost cooked, at which point, I'm going to take my giant bag of frozen vegetables and dump the whole damn thing in there. And of course, yes, for the love of God, people, season your food. I'm not gonna overdo it with anything today just because I know I'm gonna put some sugar-free barbecue sauce on there, which I'll show you in a sec. This stuff, is it as good as the barbecue sauce that you'd get at like, I don't know, a barbecue place? Probably not, but it's sugar-free. And the diabetes in me likes it. The calorie deficit in me likes it. And the I would like something on my palate that is nice. Also likes it. It's this stuff. It's uh, G. Hughes's Smokehouse Sugar-Free Barbecue Sauce, honey flavored, two carbs per serving. This whole pan is literally just a bowl of stuff. I threw it in there and I mixed it and I seasoned it with seasonings that I like. And maybe I'll put a little bit more something on it if it, I didn't get the ratios right, but I got barbecue sauce for that. So easy enough. It doesn't have to be fancy. This is like the opposite of fancy. Now I know I'm probably gonna get at least one of you who's gonna say, you know, fresh vegetables have more vitamins and minerals than frozen vegetables. To which I'll respond, yeah, that's actually right. But here's the kicker. I'm eating the whole bag. I think I'm covered. So why in God's name do I eat all of this for lunch? All right, since I can remember, I have needed to be like almost painfully full before I'll stop eating. And even then, it's like, well, what else is around? So I use that volume of vegetables to fill me up. I get plenty of micronutrients from those vegetables. I get all the protein I need in any meal from the turkey. It's gonna take a lot of protein to actually damage your kidneys, so like, relax. If you have terrible kidneys, like fine, but if you have normal kidneys, uh, that's a lot of protein, man. You're never gonna get there. But again, this is what works for me. Yes, I'm a doctor. Yes, I eat this every single day because it's easy, I don't have to think about it, and I enjoy it. It's something that's good for you, and it's something that'll fill me up, and it's something that'll keep me towards my fat loss goals. You'll notice that I talk a lot about having lots of vegetables, and that's something that I'm gonna probably harp on forever. There's a number of reasons I say that, and I mentioned the micronutrient profile, all that good stuff, but it's usually the first thing I tell people when they ask me, how do I lose weight? Especially in a clinic setting, when I don't have a ton of time to talk about what they should do, in an ideal world, what I would do is get a good glimpse of what they actually do day to day. Problem is most people who are starting that journey don't really pay that close attention. So instead of spending an hour and a half with a patient and causing the next six to be delayed that much, I'll usually just start by saying something to the effect of add more vegetables to your meals. And then a few other things too. The purpose there is you're gonna have a lot of volume and you're not gonna have a lot of calories. So the game is to maximize the amount of volume and minimize the amount of calories. Like keep yourself alive, keep yourself healthy, keep yourself satiated, but you kinda are starting to get my point here. An easy way to do that without actually counting calories is adding vegetables to stuff. Theoretically, you add more vegetables, you fill yourself up, and all the other things that you would eat, you can still eat, but you would probably have less of them because you'd be full sooner. Seems like a reasonably simple and fair concept. If you're just starting out with weight loss stuff, maybe try one thing and see what your weight does. If it doesn't change or it goes up like substantially over the course of the next handful of weeks, then maybe there's another adjustment that we can make. And yes, these small changes, a handful of weeks before something actually changes. You can go up and down 2% of your body weight naturally every single day. So if you go from let's say 180 to 177, then to 183, you didn't gain six pounds, you're just bouncing around in there. That's normal. This is over the course of many months to years if it's going to be weight loss, followed by a lifestyle that is just steady. All right, that's my vegetable spiel. Time for dinner probably soon, I'm hungry. All right, last meal of the day. I didn't show you making uh, the vegetables again, but I'm having more vegetables. And I baked some salmon with some sweet chili oil on it. Just literally pour it on top. The, uh, the purpose of that is I like to get nutrients from different sources. 
if I just eat chicken all the time, I just get what's in chicken. But different foods have different macro and micronutrient profiles that, you know, you're never gonna miss something if you eat pretty much everything. What I forgot to show you, because my camera was out of batteries, is that I had a frozen cookie earlier, and it was delicious. And it was so delicious that after I walked the dogs, I came in and had a second one. So that brings my total for today up to 2,234 calories, 210 grams of protein, 180 grams of carbohydrates, and 71 grams of fat. I will say that I hit my goals. So these are the things I want you to take from this particular video. One, what is good for you and me may be completely different things. What's good for you and somebody else on the internet are probably completely different things. We are different people with different needs and different lifestyles and that is okay. I don't want you to copy exactly what I do, but I hope maybe you can learn from the stuff that I have developed over the last 10 years and implement that sooner than, you know, 10 years down the line. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something. Maybe you can implement something that I said in your own life, in your own journey, and maybe skip a few years like, well, I didn't. If you found something helpful, let me know in the comments what you're gonna take from this, and I'll see you in the next one.